If you are looking for spooky cute, not spooky scary decor, then you're in the right place. <laughs> I'm gonna show you how to make this super adorable Halloween wood sign using plywood and a cereal box. So let's get to crafting, friends. On this channel, I love to share easy DIYs and budget home decor. If we haven't met yet, my name is Lisa and this is our gray house. Before we get into the video, I didn't want to forget to tell you that this video is part of a playlist hosted by none other than the awesome and amazingly talented Indy Annie Jones. Links to her channel and the playlist will be below. Be sure and check it out after you watch my video so you don't miss the fun. I had some extra plywood left over on hand, but you can pick this up from any hardware store like Lowe's. I had already sketched and cut out the shape of the back of a farmhouse truck and I had seen tons and tons of ideas on Etsy and I saw one that I thought was super adorable and I wanted to make a similar one and mine is really similar. Well, <laughs> if I'm being honest, it's basically a dupe, but here's the inspo piece and I've got it linked below in case you want to check it out for yourself. I cut the shape out with my jigsaw and now I'm just sketching on where the back window is going to go and where the bumper will be and all that kind of stuff. Like I said, this project is basically a dupe of the inspo piece, but mine does have some differences. Anyways, I sketched out a cat shape and a ghost shape and I cut those out of a cereal box and some other thin cardboard that I had on hand. And I also cut out some pumpkin shapes and I paint the pumpkins with Waverly chalk paint in the color. You guessed it, pumpkin. It's a really pretty orange and I like it. I painted the cat black and I guess I didn't show it, but I painted the ghost white. I know, very original. <laughs> This piece here is like the tailgate and I'm painting it with Waverly folk art or maybe it's folk art chalk paint in the color elephant gray. And I do go back later and add some other colors to give it more depth, but I'll show you that in a bit. And the truck is gonna be black and I just try to paint the parts that need painting. So like when I go back to paint the windows and the side mirrors and stuff, I don't have to go back over that 87 times to cover up the black. I mean, if you know, you know. It's just hard to cover black sometimes. And I chose to paint the rear and the side windows white and I added a bit of Parisian gray to give it some dimension. And for the bumper, I'm gonna paint that with Parisian gray as well. And like the other areas, I go back later and add some other colors to make it not look just like flat paint. You know what I mean? Like, just like, oh, just one color. <laughs> I take two wood circles and I paint them white, but I also add some gray to it and I use a silver paint pen to highlight it around the edges. These are gonna be my tail lights. And I didn't show this on camera, but after looking at the inspo piece, I go back and paint them red so that they pop and add another color to the color palette. I take some Jim Holtz distressing ink and go around the outside of all the little cardboard pieces that I cut out. I then attempt to make the pumpkin, what do you call it? Like the ridges, okay, hang on. I just had to pause on this so I could go Google it. And the indented ridges running from the top to bottom are called ribs. Now you know. <laughs> so I was trying for a much thinner line and I don't always know which brush is the best brush to use. So I just go with what my heart tells me to use. And that's uh, the one I think that'll work. Anyway, the lines turned out thicker than I wanted, but I'll try to fix that later. And I don't have any shading stuff like my friend Monica from Up All Night DIY uses. Her stuff always turns out so cool. So I'm just taking some different colors of orange to add some interest and depth and dimension. Keep in mind, I don't really know <laughs> what I'm doing. I am using black paint and I outline the ghost and add some eyes and a mouth. And I use some Parisian gray to add some folds in the ghost. Um, what do you call it? What he's wearing? Like not a robe, I guess maybe a robe, a garment, the ghost garment. I don't, I don't know what to call that either. And I use a sponge dauber to add some yellow and black to create the eyes for the cat. And of course the cat needs a nose and some whiskers. So I use elephant gray to add those. And I used a white paint pen to add some highlights to the pumpkins. And I'm just following some of the pumpkin ribs. <laughs> That's the new term we learned, pumpkin ribs. Anyway, I didn't know that before. I then took a green paint pen and added some tendrils to the stem of the pumpkin. And I used elephant again to define the cat's ears. And the bumper was Parisian gray and that just seemed like too light for the overall look. Like, so I used some elephant gray to darken it up a bit. I did use some water to kind of thin it out. I was trying for just like not one solid color like Multicolored, I guess. I don't know. And I used a white paint pen to add the treads of the tire. Just the little V's and then I used a thinner white paint pen to draw a vertical line like through the V's. <laughs> now that I'm saying V's. You know that V lady on TikTok? 
And it was another great day of saving the bees, or the V's in our case. Using the same white paint pen, I outlined the truck and I just make some lines and little dots, you know, just kind of going around, just kind of however it feels good. I used wood glue that I got from Dollar Tree and glued on the wood circles that I'm using for the taillights. I did one side and now I'll glue on the other one. And now it's time to glue down the ghost cat and all the pumpkins and i'm using that wood glue from dollar tree and once i glue something down i do use a container of paint to, to keep the cardboard from curling up and making sure that it all stays down and glued gluing down the cat she turned out pretty cute y'all i mean look at her she's cute starting on the pumpkins again gluing down and putting something heavy on top i just use all my paint cans and i put down those front pumpkins and looking at them, I think, you know, I fixed those lines pretty good. I mean, I thought they were too thick, but they turned out pretty cute, actually. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I mean, just looking at it here, I think it looks good. <laughs> but I like what I do. I like what I make, usually. I'm putting on that final pumpkin in place there on the left. And you'll see that on the left that I have like all of my paint containers holding everything down. But now it's time to focus on the bumper. And some of the designs I saw online, they had like a bow and some had fall florals and some were plain. But the inspo piece had a trick or treat, like little, the words trick or treat. And so I got some, I decided to use the word spooky. And I got these wood letters from the Dollar Tree and I'm just painting them purple. And I was going to do the whole ombre thing and get fancy, but I decided not to. Just painted them purple and I put them on some tape just to hold them down. And I glued down the letters on the tailgate using that same wood glue from Dollar Tree. And then I glued, see, it is a Cheerio cereal box. <laughs> it's not sponsored either. I glued it down in place and I almost glued it down upside down, but I fixed it and I added some paint cans on top to make sure that it all stayed down because I just wanted everything to stay in place and not like, you know, move around or anything like that. And I outlined the word spooky with my white paint pen to make the letters pop more. And for the license plate area, I'm using a Dollar Tree rub-on transfer. The space was too small, so I took my white paint and I made the area just a little bit bigger. And I also accidentally got some paint on the bumper, so I had to take more elephant paint and fix that. But it all comes, out, it all works out in the end, y'all. The paint is dry and I put on the rub-on transfer and it fits perfectly. This turned out so stinking adorable. I absolutely love it. The only thing that I don't like is that I can't put it outside on my porch. And that was going to be the original spot for this, but it's definitely not weatherproof. So it's going to go near one of my tear trays that I'm decorating for Halloween. And you'll see that in an upcoming video. But I just thank y'all so, so much for watching my video today. I really hope you have enjoyed it. And I just, I just love how it turned out. Look at that cat, y'all. And like, look at the ghosts. They're so freaking cute. And the pumpkins, I really like how they turned out after all. And as you can see, I did go back and paint um, the tail light red and the white highlight and the black highlight there. And yeah, the pumpkins turned out cute too. And I just love everything about this. And I think it turned out so awesome. The letters that spell spooky, that's all from the Dollar Tree. Aside from the plywood and the cardboard boxes that I used, this is all Dollar Tree stuff. So it's very, very budget friendly. It's so affordable. It's easy to make. And I made some mistakes along the way, but it still turned out super cute. So again, thank y'all so, so much for watching my video. I really do appreciate the company while I craft and create. And I also want to let you know that I do have a Facebook crafting group. It's called Crafty DIYs on a Budget. It is linked below. And so be sure and check it out. Also, don't forget host channels linked below, Indiana Jones. The playlist is linked below. And I'd just love it if you check that out as well. And if you want to follow me on social media, like here on YouTube or over on Instagram or TikTok or something like that, my handle is Our Gray House. But just don't follow me in real life, though, because that's creepy. Bye.